I want to welcome this, I want to welcome each one of you on this first Sunday of September into the house of the Lord. This is September 2020, the first Sunday on Sunday 6th. It is the first day of the month of harvest. Nine is what? Harvest. Nine is harvest. And I want to begin today by telling you there are people that are going to experience a bumper harvest. There will be a great return in the month of September. There will be a great month in, there will be a great harvest in the month of September. Even if that harvest means the harvest of peace. Even if that will be a harvest of joy. Even if it's going to be the harvest of plenty. Even if it's going to become a literal harvest as we march in into the month of October which completes the church. Hallelujah. And November that is the beginning of another move. And 12 which is the governmental year of God. and the, I mean the governmental month which is 12 is God's government and it's a, it's a governmental month when God wraps up things and, and you, as you face a new year and looking forward into a new year. So I want to welcome you to the first Sunday of September 2020 in the house of the Lord. I have been teaching a series that I started and today is the third part or is part three uh, of the series on the re of recovery series and I'm teaching on the recovery of faith the recovery of faith or the recovery of our faith last Sunday I was excited and even today I'm excited although I'm not going to show it uh, but if I show it it will not be criminal I, I bless the name of the Lord that faith is key faith is key in the walk of a believer and if there is something that has been challenged by the world, and the world is out to confuse, is the ability to believe in God, the ability to trust in God, the ability to believe that God is who he says he is, and he does what he says he will do. As much as we have songs that say that he is like no other, he is not created like, ever, like the creatures that we see. We sing songs that remind us that God is the same, you know, he, he is God and that is, is like no other. We read scriptures, you know, verses that tell us that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. That in aid of Hebrews, we, we have underlined several scriptures, but the world is busy trying to portray God as if he is fiction. As if he is a nice story. Or a comforting concept or idea that gives you hope. God is real. Can I hear a better amen? Is Pastor Waidaka the only person who knows God is real? God is real. Jehovah is real. Jehovah is real. And he is practical. And therefore, building your faith or your capacity to believe in him and to trust him is key for your victory and my victory. I want us to begin or reminding ourselves of what I shared last Sunday from Romans 1. Don't put it on the screen. I am going straight to the message after this. In Romans chapter 1, verses 16 to 17, we learned last Sunday but the Bible says we should not be ashamed of the gospel for it is the work, the power of God that brings salvation to you. To every man that believes that you first and also to the Greeks. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. We discovered last Sunday that the just or the righteous, those who dare to identify themselves with God must live by what? By faith, and in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, we discovered that, that that faith that is so key to you and to me that you have to live by comes by hearing and hearing what? By the word of God. And therefore, last Sunday, we discovered, I, I, I remember saying and telling everybody who would dare to listen and who was seated in this big auditorium or this big, you know, cathedral or this uh, big sanctuary. I, I remember, and those who are watching us and even they, they are watching us today on television, we were live on television last Sunday. And those who watch this message on television or YouTube or 
or Facebook Live, I remember saying very clearly that, uh, you know, we go to church, we read the word of God because by reading it, it helps us to understand who God is, what he can do and what he cannot do. We read the word of God because it introduced, God introduces us to himself through his word. It is the word of God, it is the Bible that introduces us to God. God has chosen to reveal himself through his word. He has told us what he can do and what he cannot do through his word. He has even given us testimonies of what he did with other people who trusted him and believed him like you and me. And it's written, those testimonies are written in the word of God. So that every, when it comes to your turn and my turn to believe God for something, then we don't think, we don't allow the devil to confuse us or to bring doubts into our minds because we can read in the Bible what he did for somebody else. Praise the name of Jesus. What he did for somebody else. What he did through somebody else. What he did with somebody else. What he did around somebody else. And what he will do. And then you say, if he did it for Abraham, he will do it for me. If he did it for Sarah, he will do it for me. If he resurrected Lazarus four days, then everything that is dead in me will rise up again. And even if I drop dead, it is not the end of the game. There is resurrection. Because you learn that he is the resurrection and the life. And therefore it is very important for you to feed your mind and your soul and your spirit with the word of God. Because it builds up your what? Come on. Your faith. We saw that it was impossible in Hebrews 11.6 that it was impossible to please God. It is impossible. It was impossible last Sunday, and even today, it is still what? Impossible to please God without faith. So as much as I'm waiting for 92 days to be over so that I can restore my belly button, It is really suffering. The belly button is that coffee table that you build here. It's called a tummy. Instead of building your tummy, you build your worth, your faith. Instead of just building a house, you build the house through what? Faith, but build your faith strong. So this is an invitation to those who want to please God to build their capacity, to develop their capacity to believe God and to trust God. For without it, it's impossible to please God. For those that come to him must believe that he is, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Today, I want us to pick it up from there and take it deeper on this part three of the recovery of faith. Shall we bow for a word of prayer? Our most loving Father, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we want to thank you that you assembled us here today to build capacity, to even let us and remind us that you don't change. You are never changed by circumstances. You are not threatened by what threatens us. And we are better when we trust you and build faith and believe in your word and in you because that will give, make us conquer every circumstance that we face. We worship you and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to disrupt your peace and ask you, still holding your notebook, your notepad, your iPad, your tablet, and your pen, just to rise up on your feet for a minute. If you can hold it, it'll be fine. Just one minute. Mm -hmm. Bishop, why are you disrupting our comfort? And the word has begun. 
Don't worry, you forgive me tomorrow, if not today. I want you today to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And after telling you that, I want you to take your seat. Take your seats, I'm sorry. Take your seats quickly. When I asked you to take your seat, you divided yourselves into two groups of people. Bring me a seat. Oh, I have one here. Thank you. I forgot. When I asked you to rise up on your feet, nobody bothered to do anything else. You just did what? You just were seated. You just you are seated like this, and you simply, oh, I should preach when I'm seated. It feels good. Am I the only one who, is an, who has an anointing to stand up when everybody else is seated? Okay, so when I asked you to sit up, you know what you did? You just stood up. When I asked you to take your seats or sit down, you divided yourselves into two groups. There's a group that I watched that just went back and sat down. There's another one that wanted to confirm whether the seat <laughs> is still there. Nobody told you to divide yourselves into two. There's a group that just sat. They believed that their seat that they were seated on, come on, was still there. And trying to confirm whether Steve took it away or your neighbor moved it, they considered that to be lack of what? Come on. Lack of faith. So they had faith. So what did they do? They just sat. But another group of believers that are tongue speaking and demon casting, we are not very sure whether that's it. They did not move. I just asked them to stand, and they were standing right at the same spot. But they still didn't believe that that seat was in its position. So what did they do? Come on, show me what they did. They turned and confirmed whether it is there. Every time a child of God dares to believe God, the same thing plays in your mind and in your spirit. Every time an opportunity comes for you and me to believe God for something, there is always two things that come within your mind and within your heart. One of them comes to tell you that, that one of them comes to challenge your faith and tells you that you need to confirm if not take precautions. You need to be sure that it's going to happen. Some of you have big testimonies to give but every time you decide to give the testimony, the enemy tells you, what if? I remember praying for a lady, and I've talked about this before. In the United States, I did crusades. She never came. She's the only woman that I've known, I've met. She's the only person I've met in the world who, has, who had their heart on the right-hand side. Every other human being I've ever seen, including the one talking to you, has their heart where? Come on, can you confirm whether yours is still on the left? If it's on the right, please see me after the service. And when I came to that meeting, when she heard the testimonies of what the Lord did in my crusades in the United States, or in the area, and the miracles that were taking place, she sent a son, who is a pastor, to come and ask me whether I could go and pray for her. She's elderly, very old. She was very old. Whether I can go and pray for her in her house. I know the son is still watching, probably is going to watch this message and he can confirm it. Because he's still, he goes through what we go through here sometimes. I walked into the son and his wife led me to their mom's home. And here is this lady seated on her seat. And she was glad to see me from Africa. 
the chocolate guy from Africa because I'm not black. I refuse to be black. If you think I'm black, then what will you talk about the Sudanese, the southern Sudanese? Then there will be navy blue. So I'm not black, I'm chocolate. I sat down. She told me that I asked you to come so that you can pray for me. And she talked to me about our heart's condition and how frail and how many times she has gone to the hospital and how she cannot take another surgery because the heart had become very what? Weak. Just walking from here probably to the gate would have cost her something. The heart was that weak. And I, she asked me, she told me, I know some friends who came to your meeting and they got healed. Then she asked me, can you pray for me? I said, yes, I will. And I stood and came close to her and I said, Guama, can I hold your hand and pray for you? So she gave me her hand. And then she said, before we pray, she asked me, what if Jesus doesn't heal me? What if Jesus doesn't heal me? Because I told her Jesus will heal you. But she asked me, what if Jesus doesn't heal me? Hey, hey, you ask me that question, you will get an answer. Then I, I did this. I took my hand. I said, this, this part of my hand is just exactly what you have asked me. What if Jesus doesn't heal me? I said, Grandma, my hand, has, my hand has two sides. This one, what if Jesus doesn't heal me? And the other one is, what if Jesus heals you? This is a game of life. Every time a child of God has an opportunity to trust God to move things on your behalf, to change your circumstances, the enemy wants you to stay on the what if side. But the other side took my phone. My phone has two sides and your phone has two sides. There is this. And there is this. One of them is not as admirable as this. This is simply looks like a cover. But without this side, you can take a picture. For you to take a picture, not a selfie. Selfie is when you take yourself a picture. Yes, you know that. But if you want to take a picture, which side of the phone do you use? The, the back side of your phone is where the camera is. And if I put my camera on, I'm able to see you. And if you can look at my camera, now I can take a picture of the sanctuary. Are you able to see this? I can take a picture of the sanctuary. But let me try to take a picture of the sanctuary. There is nothing. Bishop, why are you wasting time? I am not wasting time. I'm using it. This side of my camera, this side of my camera allows me to take a picture or a movie video of something moving but when I want to use it to communicate hello when I want to key in the number can you imagine me spending the whole day trying to call Pastor Daniel 07245 Jesus will find me still punching the back of my phone 
Because the keypad is not at the back. It's on the front. But both the front and the back are my phone. Come on, somebody. Why am I using examples that I was not even to use? Where are they coming from? I'll continue with them. Both the front of my phone, which I use, and the back of my phone are all in my hand. And it depends on what I use it for. You have enough doubts that are resident within you. You have enough fear inside you and me. But inside you, there is faith. There is faith. And every time an opportunity arises for you to believe God, to trust God, to do something supernatural, it all depends on which side of the two in you, you will concentrate and give room. They all rise up at the same time. The lady asked me, when I told her my Jesus will heal you today, she asked me, what if he doesn't heal me? The what if he doesn't? If it's turned around, it becomes, what if he heals me? You have heard this from the beginning, even as young as you were in primary school or elementary school, you have heard people tell you, if you want to be positive in life, if you want to be positive in life and somebody gives you, give me a glass, oh yeah, it is right here. If somebody gives you a glass of water that is halfway what? Uh, this is not half. Now it's half. If somebody, you have heard this, if you want to be positive in life, and somebody gives you, or you drink your water like I did to avoid the mark, don't say, oh my goodness, my glass is halfway empty. No. Say my glass is halfway full. <laughs> you see, because the difference between the halfway empty, you are worried about going without water. But when you can look at it as halfway full, are these examples making sense or am I wasting your time? But you can choose to cry in soprano, auto, and bass to get sympathy that your water is getting finished quickly. Or you can look at it and say, my goodness, I still have a lot of water to drink because my glass is halfway full. Why am I spending time to teach on faith that must be recovered? It's because I am a product of faith. The church you are sitting in has been withdrawn from the archives of history in prayer by what? Come on. By faith. When I preached 26 and a half years ago, when we started the first service on Sunday, February the 27th, 1994, I was preaching as loud as I was, I'm preaching right now. I was preaching as loud as I'm preaching right now. Do you know how many members were seated in the church? One, my wife. And I could have talked to her. I could have talked to her just like this. You know what Jesus said? No, no. But I was not preaching to my wife. I was preaching to a crowd that I could see. It wasn't there then. But it is there today. And for you to start with one and end up where we are and where God is going to take this church to multiple services, you require not money. You require no degrees. You can have more degrees than a thermometer, but that is not what it takes. It's part of what is necessary, but it is not what it takes. For you to move from one 
to 10, to 30, to 40, to 1,000, to 10,000. It takes faith. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand. Clap somebody. It takes faith. I am a product of faith. When I went to Tanzania in the city of Arusha to ask the Lord at the birthday of destiny, that is after February 27th, when we celebrated the first year, I decided to go as I got faith from Daniel. I got faith from Daniel chapter 9. Daniel decided to go to God in prayer and fasting. I read Daniel chapter 9. And Daniel decided to go to God in prayer and fasting and ask God, when he will save Israel from the presence of sin. We are saved from sin today. Sin is still what? Sin is still present in the world. But a man of God called Daniel, in chapter 9 of his book, he went to God and started fasting and asking God when he will save Israel from the presence of sin, when sin will be taken away. And for 21, the answer was released the first day. But the prince of Persia, the enemy of God and of his prophetic word, although the answer was released, the prince of Persia and Greece hijacked the answer. And Daniel is busy praying, day one, day two, day three, day ten, no answer. Day 13, no answer. Day 19, no answer. Day 20, no answer. Day 21, there was something that happened on day 21. The answer was still withheld by the prince of Persia and Greece. While Daniel is still going without food down here. The destiny you carry determines the kind of battles that you fight. I repeat, the destiny you carry determines the kind of battles that you fight. I tell you the truth, and I was not lying to you before. We don't kill mosquitoes using an AK-47. Can you find an army man cooking his gun? And aim at a little mosquito. And tell it, you mosquito, you came into my house without my permission. And then he says, I will shoot you dead. Choo! The bullet from an AK-47 rifle was not made for mosquitoes. It goes through the human body and comes out and kills another. It has that much force. For you to shoot an AK-47 rifle, you need to train. And sometimes it's good for you to put it, to lean it next to your, to your shoulder. Because it can, mm, we don't shoot mosquitoes. You will leave a very big hole inside your house. You just look at a mosquito and time it very nicely. Chook. See, I killed it. But not with an AK-47, it's dead. The kind of answer that was about to be released to Daniel was so heavy. It will span through time. To the time when God will remove sin from where? From the world. And the enemy said this answer is not going to be allowed to come through. Grabbed it and withheld it. And Daniel continued fasting. On day 21. The Lord commanded Michael, the archangel, the fighting angel, to go and fight with the enemies of Daniel, the king of Persia and Greece, and rescue the answer 
from the hands of the prince of Persia and Greece and bring it down to Daniel. So I decided to go when it was after the first anniversary and some of you are here and they were in the first anniversary. <laughs> Bless God. We still have over 75 members who have been with us from year one who are still members of this church. <clears throat> and I was asking God, now that you promised me to do this, and I never wanted to be a pastor, and now you made me a pastor. I had vowed I will never be a pastor. I was evangelizing. I was preaching in Europe. I was preaching in the United States. I was preaching in African nations as an evangelist, and I loved it because you don't pay the bills for the hotel. Come on. When you are a visiting evangelist, when you are a mayanja, you don't pay for your hotel. When you are Apostle Richard Mayanja, you don't pay for the hotels. You are visiting what? Come on, you are a guest minister, isn't it? Come on. I'm using Apostle Richard Mayanja because you know him, isn't it? He comes here, right? Apostle Richard Mayanja does not have to worry about Kenya Airways fare. No. That is my problem. That is not his problem. I have to fly him into Kenya. He doesn't care whether there is a taxi waiting for him or not. He doesn't have to waste time thinking and planning because that is not his problem. I'm the one to plan how to get him and where to buy him tea and coffee. And he doesn't care. He doesn't worry about who he picks him up from the hotel. And you very well know that he chooses where he sleeps because he's a guest minister. I wish I had such choices. Yeah. I'll be very blessed. Then finally, he's brought here, and Steve runs like a rocket to get, make sure that he's good. And his team, and they chase the vehicle, and they don't chase me. Why don't you chase my car? Akicha <laughs> ukweli. And they take him and they make sure that he goes back. And before he goes back, there's a check that you don't even pay me in six months. He goes back. He's a guest minister. He's a visiting speaker. I never wanted to be a pastor. I want to continue being a guest what? Because your host pays the bills. But when we are the pastor, everything comes to you direct. We have not paid rent. Jesus will provide. Electricity has not been paid. The Lord Jehovah Jireh is alive. Okay, let me move on because of time. I ask God, where will you set your destiny worship center in Thika? I paid for seven days. The hotel for seven days. No, six days, six nights, because I was to come back on Saturday. And I never heard anything on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But Thursday at 2, at 2 p.m., I was seated on my bed. I had not gotten out. I remember on Wednesday, the police coming to check because there's a visitor from Kenya who went out this room and has not come out. So they want to know what I was doing. I told them, I'm just praying. They found a Bible in my bag. That's it and juice, and on Thursday afternoon, at two o'clock, I was sitting on my bed reading my Bible, and I fell asleep. I fell asleep while I'm seated. And the whole, became a video screen right there, a screen like that one was before me. And Jesus popped out of the screen and he told me, he's listening as I say this. He's watching me as I talk about him. He came and told me, you have desired to know where I will establish you and destiny? Follow me. And we left Tanzania and we came to Thika. And we came to that gate. I had never been to this factory. And we ended in without a key. When we stood out there, I heard my worship team singing inside here. 
I could tell their voices. And as Jesus moved on, I stayed there listening to the worship team, destiny worship team, singing, that I know their voices. They were singing from inside this building. And they told me, follow me on. There was a war here I never thought. I thought that compound was the place to come and put my tent. This war had no window, had nothing. It looked like a war. Jesus told me, follow me. We came through the wall and we stood right there inside where there's that classroom. And we looked back this way and I saw the empty building. And Jesus told me, this is what I have ordained for you and destiny to raise an army for me to take to the nations. That's why destiny will remain a mission-oriented church. Hallelujah. We accept, we exist to lead cities and nations to their word. I was so excited. I finished the fasting. I jumped into Apujo. I came back to Nairobi and Fika. And on Sunday, you are, some of you are here. Some of you are here. And you know what I told you when I came out from Tanzania. I said, we are the proud owners of an industrial property in Thika. I said, I don't know where it is, but there's an industry in Thika that Jesus has given to us. And that is where we shall worship. Today, it took me 10 years of prayer and faith to see this, to birth this. And today, we are seated inside it. Since 2005, it took 10 years. It was 1995. It took 10 years. And on the 10th year, destiny was September thicker, marched from town with a police band. And we entered this facility. And if you don't know, if you visited us the other day, we own this facility. We will never pay rent for it. We own it as Jesus said. Give Jesus a hand clap. Why am I sharing? Why am I sharing these things? And I was not planning to share them. Because I want to take you to Hebrews chapter 1, verse chapter 11 and verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. What stands between you and your breakthrough is faith. This, what is required is not fuel, is not diesel, is not new clothes. It's not new, fresh air styles. All that is necessary. It is not designer suits like the one I'm putting on. This is a designer suit. They are suits and they are designer suits. Depends on where you buy them. And what you pay. Yeah. Bishop, you are very proud. No. I'm just testifying. Come on. I'm just giving you a testimony. I'm just removing my testimony. Let's look at this. Then what is this faith that without it is impossible to please God? What is this faith? Now let's read Hebrews. Let me turn my whatever on. Let's read Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 says, Now, somebody say now, 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 today, this moment. Now faith is the substance. Is the substance of things opt for. Uh -huh. Now faith is the substance of things what? Hoped for. Which when hope is alive. And hope is an expectation, isn't it? That something is going to happen. Turns into a evidence. Oh, isn't it that what it says? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. <laughs> the evidence of things not seen. Give me verse 2. We are going to verse 3. For by it, by what? By that substance of things that are hoped for. The elders. Come on, it's on the screen. The elders. 
Those we read in the Bible, those we hear their testimonies, obtain the what? Come on. Ask your neighbor, do you want to, to obtain a good testimony? Then be a man or a woman of what? Of faith. Seek to grow your faith. Verse 3. By faith. Not academia. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. He spoke it. By faith we understand. Not we think. Not we suppose. By faith we understand. We have come to a point of what? Understanding. That the worlds, everything we see and that which we study about, we are framed by the word of what? Come on, by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made by the things which are visible. Give me Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 so that I can link the two of them. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Let me link the two of them in Jesus' mighty name. In the beginning, come on, in the what? Let me link that verse 3 and Genesis where we get it from. We get it from Genesis chapter 1, right? In the beginning, Jesus, you are Lord. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Tell that young man is distracting me. He should go back to his seat. In the beginning, Beginning is when? Tell me what beginning is. What is beginning? The start. God was in the beginning. He is and he shall be forever. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Give me verse 2. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the earth. That is a message by itself. I'll come back to it. Verse 3. Then God said, let there be light. He never went to a factory. He said, let there be what? Come on. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let there be light. Read the, the final part. And immediately there was what? Come on. There was light. He said, God creates with his tongue. That's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 4 and verse 17, that he, caused, he gives life to the dead and calls things that are not as though they are. Tell your neighbor, join God in calling things. Hallelujah. My, I have grown my faith to a level whereby when that faith becomes a substance in me, yeah, and it's sub, I'll come back to substance, what substance is. When I feel it, when I feel it, yeah, the cascade money in India, that's why it comes. Not the resident faith that you usually have and I have. There is a faith that comes. And you can feel it, although you can't take a selfie. You can't take a picture of it, but it's there that this is my now moment. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Give me verse 4. I need to move on. Time is up. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Give me verse 6. Then God said, let there be what? Come on. What is a firmament? A ceiling above the sky. Let there be. Oh, I'm not supposed to come here because I don't have my mask. This COVID-19 thing should die a natural death so that we can have freedom to move. Hallelujah. It's impeding me. Whew. There was nothing up here. There was nothing. And God said, come on, read for me. Lead with me. Then God said, let there be what? 
a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it be divide the waters from the waters. Look at this. Let's move on a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Thus God made what? The firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so. Give me verse 8. Give me verse 9. Give me. Uh, 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 let's just go to verse 8 so that I don't rush because I want to finish. And God, that thing that he created as a firmament, he called it what? He gave it a name. He gave it a name. Learn to name things. Hallelujah. Don't just go to a yard to buy the available car. Go to buy a model. No, whether it's a Toyota. My son, who is now turning 29 in September 11, he used to call it Toyota. When we bought a Toyota, he called it Toyota. Because he was in school and he knew T-O-Y means what? Toy. And then the other one was O-T-A. So he would say, this is a toy otter. God created it. <laughs> and he needed to, call, to give it a name. He gave it a name. He called the firmament what? Heaven. And the evening and the morning were the first day. It has never changed. This was created. If you go to sit in Charles Darwin's class, because you are looking for education, he will introduce you to a theory that it count as this. What is it called? Huh? Evolution theory. What does evolution theory say? The theory of evolution I studied it. Go to school to study science, to become a professional and relevant in this world. But as a child of God, subject your scientific formulas to the word of God so that you can live by what? By faith. Charles Darwin says, we, we, we were one day, one time an inverted sea. And then as we continued, we were rising up slowly. Then we had some serious tales that were hanging. <laughs> and then the, as we continued, the tails also got off. They came out. I don't know who cut them. Maybe they were burnt because we were walking through fire. And then we found ourselves almost standing. And finally we found ourselves standing. And then one day I would want to tell Charles Darwin if he's, he will ever live again. I will tell him, so one day we will be... What makes you believe God spoke the heavens to existence? Faith. You study that theory. You pass your exams. <clears throat> for several years, <clears throat> for several years, I gave a lecture every February in Arizona State University. You don't know that. I gave a lecture to the medical doctors, students from all over the world who were studying medicine in Arizona State University, one of the leading tropical disease and, you know, in, in, you know they study diseases and how to cure them and everything else. It's a leading authority in this world. I was invited for several years, every February, to go and give a lecture to the medical students on divine health as an alternative to medical science. Ha. Can I repeat the topic? Divine health as an alternative to what? To medical science. And I gave lectures to those doctors one hour. They're seated there with their professors. And on the seventh year, I got tired. I said, I will do practicals now. Practicals. So I said, today, I'll give you a lecture for 15 minutes. And now we are going to practice what we have been hearing. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. 
I said, if you are sick in this meeting, come. I want to pray for you. Huh. The professor was biting his fingers. I still know he's a friend. Right? Because this is not why he invited me. And that tells you why I was never invited again. Because everything that has a beginning must have a what? Must have an end. I have now turned the class into a healing center. And I said, stand on your feet and come to the front. And because they have been hearing, they came to the front. Doctors. <laughs> and I still remember this sister, this doctor. There are several of them who got healed instantly. But this one had a very big problem. Had a serious problem with their neck. It was really... <laughs> As she stood there like an astronaut, I said, God, if you don't bail me out, it's your name that is going to be blasphemed. And I prayed for them, and several of those doctors got instant healing, including this one. Yeah. Hear this. It doesn't end there. Arizona State University student parking lot is almost between here and the, and, the, and, the, and the total roundabout going to section 9, if not Tuskies. That is the student parking lot. And her husband was in the house. She was not supposed to. She had a myriad of problems, including a disease that she could not even... She had to use a lift to come to the lecture theater. She cannot use the lift, the, the stairs, because her heart was so bad. But when God healed one part of her body... I saw her open the twin doors, boom, and she ran out. She never waited for the lift. She went down the stairs running. She ran for all that stretch and went and called her husband and told the husband, come and get healed. And they both ran with their baby through the same thing. And they came, to, they came and said, this is my husband. He also has this and that. They got healed. I was fired. I was fired. I was fired. But even up to this day, there are three student doctors from Japan who were in that meeting who still communicate to me because they got healed up to tomorrow. Amen. Up to this day. The Bible says, Hebrews 11, give me 11, give me 11, 1. The Bible says faith is the substance Come on. Of what? Of things opt for. The evidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith is not just fiction. There is a level. At level three, it turns into what? Evidence. You have nothing to show, but it is what? The evidence is where? Come on. What is a substance? I studied in school in chemistry like you and me. And I remember my chemist teacher saying, a substance is a matter with uniform properties and solid presence. It's something you can touch. A substance is a matter, a matter, a matter with uniform what? Properties. Mm -hmm. And solid what? Presence. In other words, it's something you... In simple terms, substance is something you can touch, you can feel. You can't show it to Pastor Waidaka, but you can feel it in you. That's why it comes. That's why it comes to give you permission to lay hold of a promise that you read in the Bible. And it's not there. So you are hoping for it, isn't it? You have hope. Because hope is an expectation that something is going to do what? Come on. It's going to happen. That is hope. So faith is the substance of things that are what? Come on. That are not here. But you have an expectation that they are going to do what? Come on. They are going to have it to happen. They translate into what? Come on. To evidence. 
What is evidence? Evidence is simply proof or confirmation. You know it is there. Let me go back to my story in Tanzania. Whew. It's time to finish. When I came from Tanzania, I'm growing old. When I came from Tanzania, armed with a promise from God that is going to give us an industry where we worship today. And for your information, when we bought it, it had no windows, just like Jesus showed me the windows that were cutting. I had an expectation that we will own a what? An industrial property. And as we continue, it became a confirmation in me that this is not fiction. This is not empty rhetoric. It shall come to do what? Shall come to pass. I'll never forget 2000, the year 2000. Pastor, Ma, Pastor Michael, you were one of the elders then. That time we were dealing with elders. Some of you have silent questions. Why don't we have elders in destiny? Because the elders crucified Jesus. <laughs> in 2004, we walked away from elders in destiny. We went into leadership team. I have a what? I have a team of leaders that we lead together. So I'm not the only one with monopoly of revelations and visions. I, we moved into a leadership team and we lead well as a team. Hallelujah. Are we together? It moved. You know, I needed to, I needed to feel it. I knew it was there. But 2000, Pastor Michael Waitaka, you are an elder. And we started the Agai Project. How many of you remember the Agai Project? Yeah, I see all these hands. They remember the Agai Project. We were trying to buy a small factory in town called Red Timber. Red Timber, because I am pregnant with an industry. And we raised 1,297,000 shillings. You remember? And I went to pray. I like going to the mountains to pray. And I'm in the third day of prayer. And the Lord asked me, who told you that that little factory is the industry that I promised? Does it look like it? He told me, kill that project. Did I come to talk to you, elders? I told you, God told me it is not this one. Our industry is still coming. It was evidence that I have what? Come on. We have an industry, not that factory. I remember the late elder Buires asking me, what are we going to do with the money that people have collected? Bishop, why can't we just buy it and continue trusting God for the other one? I said, I don't buy something that God has not given me. The project is dead. He still asked, he's an intellectual guy. He asked me, Bishop, 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 Bishop. I sense trouble, and it's true. He sensed trouble because when I, when we never, when I announced to the church that we are not buying the factory, some people left destiny. Because they said he was waiting for us to contribute money. So that he can go. And then I made a mistake. I bought a Primera. I bought an, a car. You know, the same time. I bought a car. The same time. And I remember several people left the church. Because the rumor was started by people I work with in the office. That I bought that car with that money. No. I told the elders. He was one of them. Brios, the KCB guy is in America today. He lives in the United States. He was the other elder. And they all, the two of them ganged up together and told me, Bishop, you will be in a lot of trouble. You will be discussed. You will be talked. People will criticize you. I said, they would rather criticize me, but my faith tells me the industry is coming. Today we are in it. Today we are in that industry. Today we are in that industry. It has to be Evidential within you. Don't tell me you are trusting God, God to have supper tonight and you have 1,000 shillings in your wallet. 
I'm believing God that I will have supper. Stop it. You have 1,000 in your wallet or in your purse or in your back pocket. And you are busy saying, brethren, praise the Lord. Amen. Today I am trusting God for supper. I am believing God for supper. Shut up. Just go and buy supper. Buy pizza. Or buy chapati. Or buy donuts. Or buy gedeli. Mokimonado manamarigo. No, you buy it. You don't need faith when you have 1,000 shillings to eat supper. You need to walk yourself into an hotel or into a shop and buy food. Let me conclude because time is up. I'll continue this coming Sunday. And I've not even started preaching yet. Can you imagine I've not started preaching yet? What happened to the time that I had? I chased rabbits by giving you crazy testimonies and I forgot to preach. I think I did. I preached. Somebody's faith is... Mm, 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 mm. But when you are like a brother of mine, a friend of mine, I told you one day here in this church, this girl here, who is my wife today, for those 33 years, she was a girl and as skinny as a mosquito. <laughs> and me, I had beards, I looked like a bush, like a Mau Mau veteran. We looked like gorillas for Christ. There's this brother who is a very senior technician. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a video programmer. You know him, don't you? Uh, when I mention his name, you discover we used to meet as young men after service. And talk about how we want to take the kingdom by force. Yeah. We did not meet in a retreat or a restaurant. We met in the mission field. And she considered me to be very crazy. Today I'm crazier than she thought. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Brother, stand over. Could you stand on your feet? This brother lived with his uncle. A very mean uncle. He was not working. We were living in Nairobi, all of us. His uncle was given his annual leave to go home. And he went and bought a five liter jerry can of paraffin and he left one packet of cooking flour, uugari, jogo. And have a debe of yasi. And he went home for one month. And this brother is not working, but he's full of the Holy Ghost. And my friend up to today, we talk about faith. He was left alone. Of course, he finished the viases. So he left church. And we would all go, like young single men, we would visit one of them who can give us lunch, you know, because you cook today, I cook tomorrow. That's survival for the fittest. He tells us, come we go home. Let's go to my house today. I'm going to buy you lunch. I'm, I'm going to, we, we prepare something for lunch. <laughs> there was nothing. He only had farafin. He only had cooking fuel. I mean, is it fuel or oil? Yeah, fuel. Cooking. Because he was left with five liters. And we go there, three of us, and him, the fourth one, and we sit like bachelors on stools. And the brother says, let me go and prepare tea for you. And, we, and bread. We are going to eat lunch shortly. He goes and takes a cooking pot for tea. Fills it with water. And turns on the cooking stove because it has kerosene. And for 15 minutes we are still waiting for tea. 
So we start asking, brother, what are you doing? We could hear the shh, remember the, those pressure, whatever. We could hear vroom, 15 minutes. So we are, me, I'm, a, I'm the curious one. I'm in Mutokozi. I said, brother, what is happening? Why, why is the tea not coming? Connor, are you cooking stone soup? You know, you remember those days? We used to sell the stone soup in class four in the 60s and 70s. We asked him, are you cooking the stone soup? What are you cooking? He said, don't come here. I'm about to serve tea. So he comes out and puts cups next to our feet. Everybody, a cup. Empty. Ready for tea. And the only thing that is there is boiling water. And we can see him just walking in the kitchen. Kumbay was, we didn't know that he was praying. He has given, he says, now I'll be bringing the tea shortly. Then after 25 minutes and the water was really boiling, we could hear it. He said, let me get some bread. Let me, I discovered I don't have bread. Let me get some bread uh, in the kiosk. And he opens the door and walks out. Exactly 50 meters from the door, another couple that I know very well from Deliverance Church Nairobi, where we were members that time, comes and parks their car outside there. And they say, brother, oh, God is good. We, we, thank God, we, we didn't know whether we'll find you at home. We, we, we just failed to bring you this. And they had a pepper bag. In that pepper bag, there was a kilo of sugar, there was two packets of milk and two loaves of bread. What do you make with all those things in that bag? Tea. He said, you don't have to worry. They said, we are not getting in. Please take this. We are not getting in. He said, yeah, you don't have to. I thank God. Thank you very much and God bless you. He came back in and said, brethren, tea will be ready shortly. And of a truth, we took tea. And bread. Give Jesus a hand clap. Do you have faith? Do you have faith that can cause heaven to command somebody else? I'm sick and tired of preaching to unbelieving believers who never came to church today. Unbelieving believers. Do you know an unbelieving believer is which one? They are not here today. They never came. Unbelieving believers, they have underlined all their Bibles on promises that they have no faith to draw. As that brother, as water boiled, that brother <laughs> built capacity. He built faith and believed God that God will not embarrass him. And God had to command somebody else, a family from church, to make a detour and come and provide what was needed for tea. Do you have faith that can draw from heaven, that can withdraw from the kingdom of God what you need? Or are you, or are you just a good goody, a church going believer? Do you have faith? To be continued this coming Sunday. To be continued this coming Sunday. My wife knows she's married a crazy man. As long as I know God, I don't drink. I don't take booze. I don't drink. By the day I will find beer that has been made in the kingdom of God, I will be so drunk. You won't even know me. Faith is what separates you from everybody else walking on planet earth. Faith is what distinguishes a child of God from a religious nut. Did I just say that? What did I say? <laughs> Kai, I need help. Did I just say religious nut? Yeah, I think I said it. Faith is what separates you 
from every other person you went to school with. Your pay slip is the same. Your paycheck is the same at the end of the month because you studied the same degree or the same PhD or in the same discipline. You studied the same, uh, uh, you know, whatever. You have the same job. But what separates you from the rest of your classmates is the level of your faith. What separates you from your own blood brothers and your own blood sisters is the level of faith that you carry. Why? Oh, I already said I'll preach on Sunday. Can I just say this and finish and then I continue preaching on Sunday? Why? Stand up, my brother. Faith will give you what money cannot buy for you. Faith will take you where money cannot take you. Faith will accord you opportunities and privileges that nobody else can give you. Faith is the assurance of things opt for the evidence of things that are not seen. Until you give. Until you learn to give until people, um, baka, until people complain. Brothers complain. That lady who came with an alabaster oil broke it until the disciples did what? Complain. Until your faith is strong enough to draw, to withdraw. Mm. Mm. Feed your faith and your life will never be the same again. I'll continue on the coming Sunday. Let's stand on our feet. Give Jesus a hand clap if you can. A hand clap for Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Faith is the assurance that what I expect God to do, he would do. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like preaching, but I cannot because of time. Let me be obedient to the government. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands to God. Father, I ask you to release a baptism of faith. Let faith fall like rain upon each one of us in this sanctuary. Upon those brethren that are watching us on television. Those that are watching us on Facebook Live. And those that are watching us on YouTube. Let YouTube, let faith fall like snow, like rain in the name of Jesus. Let faith come so that that housing project can be completed let faith come so that that miracle that miracle that miracle that is needed by that brother that sister is actualized and becomes it comes to pass becomes a testimony let faith draw let faith come to that family that has been trusting you for a baby that has been trusting you for children that has been trusting you for healing from cancer from dying diabetes, from high blood pressure, from, from, from heart diseases, from lung diseases, from abdominal, abdominal cancer or pelvic cancer or prostate cancer or whatever cancer or leukemia. Let faith come so that that brother can walk into a car lot and take home the car of their choice. Let faith to own the house that we rent today come. Faith that will convert us to home owners than tenants in that home. My God, I ask you to do something that looks a little bit impossible with our human minds. There are brothers here and sisters or oh, if they develop enough faith, you will own the company that you work for. 
You will own the shop where you work. You will own the factory that you work for. You will own the vehicle, that, the matatu that you drive. You will own the, 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 the house that you rent. Receive that anointing today. Receive that breakfast today. Receive that faith that possesses, that possesses. Thank you for hearing the prayer. Thank you for answering the prayer. Thank you, Jehovah God. I give you praise. I give you worship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give Jesus a better hand clap. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Whew. How many of you would want to own the house they rent? How many of you would want to own the house they rent? Let it not be a two-bedroomed house. That would be wasting faith. Okay, let me make it general. How many of you want to a transfer of ownership over something that you know you don't own, but you want it? The title, you want something to be signed, something to be signed and delivered to you. Come on, come on. Receive that anointing. Receive that transfer. Receive that transfer of wealth in the name of Jesus. Let this week be your week to harvest from the Lord that which you have been trusting him for. Let the harvest come. Let the harvest come. Let the transfer deed be signed. Let the money be wired into your account in the name of Jesus. Let the title deed be delivered into your home. Let the car logbook be handed over to you. Let the car keys come to you in the name of Jesus. Let the title deed be brought to you. For thine is the kingdom, Lord, the power and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Give Jesus our cup. Thank you. I am so sorry to have 